Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jambox. We're here. We're back at it again, and we're going to get on into it. But before we do, as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. And with that being said, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Organic herbs and botanicals, skin care and edibles, wellness for body and mind. The Brothers Apothecary. Fine teas and remedies. All right. Thank you all so much for watching again. Shout out the Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. Guarantee you're going to like it. Make sure to use code Jambox for 20% off and a free gift. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is today's guest. What's going on, everyone? This is Matt Randall. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are, where you're from, what you do. Give us that, like, Tinder profile of your involvement with music. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, yeah, this is Matt Randall here. I'm from the north side of Portland, St. John's neighborhood, to be exact. Um, and, yeah, music started off early for me, uh, as early as I can remember, just hearing uh, California Love by Tupac and Dr. Dre. Man, okay. Really what kind of set me off on this journey. Um, and then... You know, getting into it, middle school, high school, um, you know, just started writing, starting trying to explore how to record it myself because I didn't want to uh, pay somebody else's studio. I wanted to have that. Uh, yeah, have that experience myself. yourself. You know what I mean? And and I, it actually paid off and I'm still audio engineer and I'm still a hip hop artist. Oh, hell yeah. To this day. What uh, around what time was that when you like started doing like learning how to record yourself and things like that? Actually, it was a freshman year of high school. I went to Roosevelt High School, okay. and uh, so that was like the start of me trying to be an audio engineer. Uh, I, I used a uh, Cool Edit Pro, and then it's it turned to okay. the audition. Yep, one point five. So I just found ways to, you know, start creating on there. I found out you could do like a script plugin, and mm -hmm. then you could just run all of. Oh, on there, man. Okay. And once I did that, I just, you know, was off to the races. <laughs> Hell yeah. So you you got started kind of in an abstract way. I don't hear Adobe too too often yeah. in the like audio right. stuff. So yeah. you really, what do you what do you use now? Uh, I'm I'm Logic Pro now. So okay. I finally made the switch from PC to to Mac or I would say around twenty fourteen. Okay. Um and yeah, I've just been logic ever since. Okay, cool. And we'll definitely we'll dig into that more in the sure. middle. I just I as from one engineer yeah. producer to another, I was Absolutely. definitely curious. Yes, sir. Um but we do have a couple foundation questions we check in with everybody on. Okay. And this first one is one we ask early, it's one we ask often, and it's definitely a crowd favorite. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? First album I bought with my own money. Oh we let's see. Man, it had to have been um one of those, I think it was the Snoop Dogg album, I think it was called Pay the Cost to Be the Boss. It had this okay. like, blue cover, and I, I it was when he was with No Limit. Mm -hmm. uh, so he had just signed with No Limit Records. And I remember there was this man that was from, I guess he lived in Oregon. He designed all those album covers where it looked like oh, 3D cool. and, and all that. So if y'all go back and watch them uh, or look at all those cash money covers, you'll see the guy, I guess he lives out here in Oregon or something. Oh, like damn. That. Well, shout yeah. out to that guy. Yeah, that, you know, a little cool piece of information. Yeah. I think that might have been the first one. That I bought my own money. Oh yeah, yeah. And what made you pick that? Oh uh, man, you know Snoop to this day. You know he's like probably the most recognizable figure in the hip hop world. Very much. He's so. just like such a such a cool. You know, like he just wanted to emulate that. He just wanted to yeah. be that smooth. You know, and and he was dope. You know, he still is. Um, but like really back then, you know, he had he had a lot to prove after he left Death Row. You know what I yeah. mean? So he was, you know, he was in his bag and and you know even even now, like I can't think of too many other people that actually like sound like him. Oh yeah, he really had such one like, on one. I like iconic tonality exactly and approach that yep. like even if you copied his style you didn't have his way of speaking and if exactly. you try to copy his way of speaking you definitely didn't have his 
style. Facts. So that's I I never really considered that till now. But yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely nah, an that's, iconic man. I always look at people that you know that you could tell they're one on one. You yeah, know? and that's what I always strive for with my art and just how I carry myself and in, individually anyway. So. Oh yeah, no, I love that. Yeah. And then what was one of the first live shows you ever went to? That was like one you wanted to go to. So you saw it was happening. You got tickets and you went to it. Yeah. Um. I would say. Nas, um, he he was at the Roseland okay. in uh, 2007. My brother, I went with my brother and my boy Saint mm -hmm. and my other brother Glenn, and we all just went to see Nas. Nas is my favorite rapper, so um, like just seeing just seeing him live, and he was just like right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh uh, man, it was it was crazy. It was incredible. Oh yeah. yeah. No, I mean, man, you, it just sounds like you've been experiencing quality music from the beginning. Hey man, that's the goal. Yeah. yeah. Was was anybody in your household musical, or like, did you ever any other like musicians or like musical artists in in your like vicinity, or are you like first generation? Oh man. Uh. So you know, come to find out, my on my dad's side of the family, there's a lot of jazz musicians. Oh we cool. Have, like, a bunch of jazz musicians, so I, it makes sense as to why I'm like such a jazz fan. Yeah. You know, like my Davis, Coltrane, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, these they played with with acts that would come into town and everything. And then just like in my in my mom's household, mm -hmm. rest her soul, my grandmother, rest in peace, her as well. Um, they loved music, so like I heard music constantly. Yeah, you know, just like Frank Sinatra's, and my mom was a huge Michael Jackson fan, so she would play all of Michael Jackson from Jackson 5 until, you know, the current. Like, she would do that damn near every day. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it was instilled in me, you know, so it's it's not a surprise that I'm into this field. Yeah, hell yeah. And it's not, I imagine they were pretty supportive of you as you were getting into it and going on with They loved it. They loved the fact that I was, like, bringing, they just, like, have a company, so they loved the fact that I, I brought pretty much damn near every artist in uh, Portland, you oh, know, yeah. uh, through my, my grandma's house, man, like Mike Capes and all sorts of guys that are in the scene. Um, they've all came through and recorded at some point or another uh, oh, yeah. when the house was still there. So, yeah, they loved it, man. They, they supported it. 100%. That's awesome. That's really cool to hear. Yeah. And then before we get into you and more of the current day, do you have a defining moment where you decided you wanted to take music more seriously? <sighs> Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, when uh, my son, my son was born uh, November 21st, 2014. And ever since he's been here, it's just made me want to uh, strive for something, man. And now he's he's damn near 10 years old and he sees what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, he's a fan of he's, he's kind of making beats right now. Too. Oh, hell yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool to see another generation maybe fall in the footsteps. I'm not pushing them, but no, yeah, you gotta let them. 21st, 2014, that was the, the defining moment. When he was born, that's when I started being on this journey that I'm on now. Damn, that's awesome. Yeah. Not a lot of people can pinpoint the specific dates. So I, that's could, really, I could, I that, could, man. That, that's really cool. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, because everything, everything before that was cool. It was me finding myself and trying to mm -hmm. discover my sound. But obviously, when he was here, that's what, um, that's what inspired the art now. No, I love that. And yeah. it's cool that you're giving him the opportunity, but not like pushing him at it. He's like, just around it. Yeah. Music yeah. is one of those things where it's like, if you can pick up an instrument and do something whenever you want, or if you can like, you know, touch the computer whenever you want, if, right. if it's available, you're going to find your way to it. Like, sure. like growing up, my dad did graphic art and design and yeah. like, I never worked with him in the business, but I do all my own logos. I can do all my own stuff. Yep. I understand like how to layer things. It's kind of because, second nature, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always like it's been there. Like I understand the parts, and that now, like at least for myself, I can self sustain. Yeah, and yeah, no, I I, I dig that for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, oh, yeah. sir. But now let's go ahead and get on into you in the current day. For sure. And uh, I have a feeling this is going to be a super easy answer, but we're going to get an easy question out of the way. How'd you pick the name? My name? Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's it's birth. Uh, since birth, my name is Matthew, uh, but my mom spelled it with one T and Randall spelled the way it is. So it's like my name already is a little different when you see it. Yeah. And you know, people are always gonna spell it with two T's anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, I try to tell my mom that, but uh, Matt Randall, my name is my name, and it's just the best way to show up as an artist. You know, just give them who I am. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Was there ever a point in time where you went by any kind of stage name, or have you just always been? Yeah, man. Uh, I used to go by. Chosen one. Okay. And uh, that was like middle school. And then uh, LeBron ended up getting it tattooed on his back. And I said, <laughs> nah, I'm good. I got to I gotta cut it. And then I cut it down to Chose. And I was like, young Chose and all that. My boy Craig Doby still calls me Chose. So there's like certain people in the North that still call me Chose, which is hilarious. Because I stopped going by that in uh, 2011. Yeah. So it's been a long time. Hey, sometimes a nickname myself. just sticks. Yeah. But yeah, it sticks. So, you know, uh, yeah, Chose. That was, that was the the defining era to yeah. who I became you know if it, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for Chose it wouldn't be me right now fair enough well hey I mean 
your name now is pretty solid and it's definitely, sure. it's cool because it is unique but it's not <clears throat> difficult to say you know sometimes yeah. people are like here's this abstract spelling and you're like right why are there three p's and why are they all silent like i hear you you know so it's cool that yours stands out but it's still easy to find like yeah. you know you, you can search it quickly on spotify quickly was, on instagram it's that was there. that was the intention man because like when you know, i was going by chose and chosen one there's so many people mm -hmm. that pop up on google and back then it was it was myspace that myspace era really like got me where i'm at for real because yeah. like, i learned how to market i learned how to find people in different cities i could send my music to and all that um you know so when i type in shows it was like yeah a thousand of them would yeah show so up. matt randall it just works perfect hell yeah yeah man i don't think enough people that at least were around for that era of it give myspace the credit it deserved for creating a lot of opportunities for right. like music specifically i'm telling you i i found a formula like you know i st I, I created like a script where i would mm -hmm. kind of like all right, so this was my this was my thing. I'd, I'd look up a zip code in a city. Okay. So I like L.A. I find all the surrounding uh, area codes, zip mm -hmm. codes in L.A. You could put that in, and then it's just I'm targeting like women. So I was just like, oh, I'm adding all of them and send them a message, and some of them would respond, and they wouldn't. Yeah. You know? And that's kind of was my marketing plan. Like women consume music, they purchase music. So mm -hmm. I was trying to target women all across the, Miami, New York. I was just trying to like. Think of different cities. Yeah, the places where music is in. big. Exactly. So yeah. that's how I started learning how to like target marketing and starting how to like promote yourself and everything. And so yeah, that, if it wasn't for MySpace and that music generator, man, it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be me right now for sure. So that was I give MySpace all the credit. Damn, hell yeah! Shout, well, shout out Tom. I was gonna say Tom wherever you're at. Yo Tom, thanks dog. Appreciate Yo, Tom, you. Tom, thank you, bro. Oh yeah. Now let's go ahead and let's talk about your writing process. Okay. And we're going to break it up into chunks, but we're going to start right at the beginning. Okay. So when you get inspired, you're ready to make music. What are some of the things you do to get a track started? Man, uh, shoot, I've just, I, I play the beat, man. Uh, you know, luckily, do you usually make your own beats? Do you have like other people's on hand? I, I wish I could say I make my own beats, but <laughs> I have shout out to all my producers, man. Y'all are amazing. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be Matt Randall sounds without my producers. So, uh, they get all the love and respect. Uh, luckily I, you know, I started off with instrumentals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously you're, I'm rapping on like in the club and wankster and all this, mm -hmm. crap, you know what I mean? Uh, and then, you know, you, you kind of prove yourself on mixtapes. Yeah. To the point where you get producers that believe in you. So now, you know, it's like five, six of them that could, you know, anytime. So I'm playing the beat. I have to like just sit in my space and like really just commit to sitting there. Oh, my space reference. Hey, <laughs> my space. Come on. See, see, it's all on time juice. Uh, nah, just like really sit there and just like let it play. I'll just let it loop. Mm hmm. And uh, I start mumbling cadences. Okay. So like I'll mumble the cadence mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm able to record it. So I could just like go up there and mumble it and record the cadence. Yeah. Or for me, I'm just kind of like mumbling it and then I just fill in words. Okay. So that's kind of how it go. And I just, I don't know where it comes from, man. Like, I don't know. No, I mean, just that's let it. I just let it lead. Flow. I just let it go. I just let my, my uh, I used to write, but obviously like the phone, I'm typing on my notes, yeah. my notes app or whatever. And, uh, I just let it do its thing. Oh yeah, and that's kind of how all my songs are created. No, I dig that. So, do, do you never went like the freestyle approach? You always kind of have something where you've gotten it down. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely freestyled too. I think I'm more, of, but I'm definitely more of a writer, just in yeah. terms of like, because the stuff I'm thinking about is so layered, and sometimes like my my songs will go with people's heads. So, yeah, like I'm just writing so like you know i'm just thinking about it for sure so i think the cadence is kind of like freestyling the cadence mm -hmm. but obviously like you know I'm, I'm filling the words in as well yeah. so it's like i'm real like rain man with it you know what i mean I dig that. so wow <laughs> <laughs> and yeah i mean definitely i was listening to your music earlier and it there there are a lot of layers to your work yeah like, there's a lot of like it's one it's it's got a, like a multi-listen experience yeah. like once you get through it once you're like yeah. oh he said that and then you listen through it again you're like oh he yeah. was saying that so yeah, i like that shit yeah, yeah that's no. the type of hip-hop i like um no i mean and your sound is really cool like it, it's a solid layer of like it's got this old school feel like the, sure. the texture the the grit the like actual like delivery of it yeah but it feels very like not modern isn't the right word but very conscious right without being like a conscious rapper you know right. what I mean? like you exactly. you have you you have thought and intent 
in what you're saying, but it feels sure. very present. It doesn't feel like you're hiding behind metaphor right. all the time. And so right. that's, that's really appreciated. And I mean, Thank you know, your music goes back, you know, you're coming up on two decades, you're, you know, on Spotify, yeah, it starts back on 2015. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So like, I, obviously I tried my best to scrub all this stuff beforehand, but, uh, hey, I mean, you know, yeah, 2015 was really the start. Cause like I said, my son was born mm -hmm. late, uh, 2014 and I put my project out, uh, October 8th, 2015. I remember Wow, I was in Atlanta at, uh, a3C festival and I dropped my project and I just remember just feeling like oh man you know like I'm I'm here yeah you know what I mean like even though I had no idea what the journey would be like at that point but you know alignment was definitely the start of the Matt Randall journey yeah and I mean you know looking back even on your stuff like there's you know there's gaps in between because back in the day you didn't have to put out a song every right. every month to be you know quote unquote relevant yeah but like the timeline it seems very like on point the growth seemed very on point I mean you've got three albums on there that are all no miss albums like right. that's, that's an impressive feat in and of itself it was for I took I took this project it was uh, called Libero it was produced by Snugsworth I had took it off uh, the internet but that was 2016 so I had it was Alignment, Libero, Art of Allowing, and then I did these four EPs that kind of, like, they're all like a series, so, mm -hmm. uh, and then I did uh, What Are You Afraid Of, and now, I'm, uh, obviously, the world keeps spinning. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just trying, everything is its own little artistic time period, that's kind of how I look at it, like art. No, I dig that for sure. You know? And I mean, you know, I, you've also got a ton of features. Like, oh, yeah. That's nearly I'm every saying. song, I mean, you know, and like I, just a few of the names I recognize, West Side Boogie, Boca. Yeah. I mean, uh, is it Selah? Selah, yep. Selah is yep. definitely featured on a ton. Of, and I yep. mean, so many, like, I could have written down all of them, but then yeah, Milk, the, the whole shout dog, out would have been there. Everybody, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I just love working with everybody. Like, that's one thing I love to do is like, you know, I have a studio, so... Mm -hmm. When you bring people in to record and they find out that you rhyme too, they're like, oh man, get on this. Yeah, exactly. So it's like an easy way to kind of like sneak on. I, I like being in other people's worlds. And again, that's another promotional tactic, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like, if you kill a verse, Boca's listeners or, mm -hmm. or, or Boogie's listeners or whoever's listeners might be like, oh man, who is this Matt Randall guy, you know? Yeah. So I, I definitely... Uh, really enjoyed doing feature verses for sure. It's fun. Hell yeah, no, I love yeah. that. And I mean, you know, I was listening to your most recent album, uh, the, the World Keeps Spinning, yeah. and it's I, it's really good. Like, it's Thank obviously you. a very good example of, like, where you're at now musically. Right. Um, and I mean, like, you know, I mean, first of all, shout out to Gold Beats and to uh, Solomon. Quality producers there. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah the, gold, like, Golden Beats and Solomon, yeah. Yeah. Guys. Oh, sorry, I, I mistyped there, but yeah. No worries. Golden Beats. <laughs> um, and I mean, yeah. it just, it like, I could speak on a bunch of it, but I do this bit where I have a personal pick and it's not from that album. Okay. So I would much rather hear a little bit of insight from you. What, what like what was your intention behind it? What were kind of the thoughts and the design that Project. went into that album? Yeah. Um, so it's uh like you said, it's funny you say coming up on two decades. So um my company is called New Beginning Global. Mm -hmm. So NBG, I say it all the time, or Globe. Um basically it was an ode to them. You know, I had actually just um I seen like all my friends, the original MBG, where it's like I'm really the only rapper mm -hmm. in that original collective. It was just like a group mm. of friends. Uh, and we all started this in high school, um, freshman year of high school. And, you know, we all kind of clicked up as grown men now. We're all like 30s and stuff. So um, it was like, you know, I wanted to do something to honor the 20 year anniversary of MBG. So that's oh, okay. what Keith Spin is about. It's like we're Globe, our group, we're going to keep going mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying regardless so that's what the meaning behind the world keeps spinning is so i was really intentional with things that kind of like like world seamless is you know like yeah. mbg forever and you know that's that song is uh near and dear to me because i like actually talking about my relationships with my with my brothers and stuff mm -hmm. and uh you know what i'm saying rest in peace with my brother just nice um you know definitely mention him on there and uh you know just thinking about real life stuff that i've been through and uh, I just put it in song, man. Like I, I, life is the best subject matter. I always say that to everyone, and yeah. uh, that's where I draw from all the time. So, uh, yeah, just the the project is just like you said, it's where I am right now. Um, but you know, I've got so much more in store, man. It's just crazy. Like I have a vault. Ever since COVID happened, I've got 
you know, a hundred songs. Man, if people weren't putting stuff in their vault during that time, they yeah. were missing out on on creative opportunities. At that point, I never really had a vault. I was doing it as it yeah. came. Uh, I put the pressure on myself to. I announced I was going to do like four EPs in a year and I had nothing done. <laughs> so I was like creating. Yeah, you just it had to do I went. it as you went. Yeah, yeah, right after Art of Allowing, I just started going. Mm -hmm. you know? So I was just like every three months, four months, I was putting out a project. And, uh, you know, that's what created this this work ethic I have now. Yeah. Um, so I've just been kind of nonstop and I just do that with my artists and stuff as well. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Yeah, man. Now, that being said, like I said before, my personal pick is not off of that album. For sure. We're going to go back one more. Okay. Uh, the track I picked was Spiritual Warfare. Yeah. yeah. Off the album, What Are You Afraid Of? Yes. That just, first of all, the keys. The Crazy. keys and the beat yep. just shoo. Yep. Pulled me in right away. Uh, like, I'm Marquise I'm, on the beat. Hell yeah. I'm I'm big on sounds. I'm big on layers. Like, yeah. And that just, something about it the whole time just pulled me right in. Yeah. And I mean, you just, you were just gassing it the whole time. Like you just, you just Thank on you. it and on it and on it. But everything felt very like emotionally driven, but intentionally. Right. You know what I mean? Like it just, right. it had that, like everything was really present. Everything was really strong. For sure. And it just, it, it, it really connected with me on a lot of layers. That's dope. I'm glad you said that. Cause those are like the, the B side type records that, you know, people don't really speak about. Yeah. So, uh, like cool, quick story about that beat. Mm -hmm. um, I had that beat for like a year. So like, okay. this is the start of me and Marquise working. So like, you'll notice, um, like from now, from the next thing that we do here on out, like you're gonna see him a part of my stuff, either oh, producing cool. it or rapping on it. Like we have a project, we have the MBG album, and we just got a lot of stuff. He produced that beat. Mm -hmm. so that was the start of our working relationship. I held it onto it, and I just remember, like I kept listening to it, kept listening to it, and I had the Kanye, no one man should have. Like I had that mm -hmm. in my mind, but I just didn't know where I was gonna go with that. Um, but I just kept telling him, yo, just save that for me, save that for me. And then uh, getting Xavier on there, he was going by Gates at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so Xavier's another artist on MBG who... That was like our first song, and I've known him for 10 years yeah. or something like that, and we never did a song. So like we finally got a chance to sit there in my kitchen where I, where I cook up. I record all my stuff in my kitchen, mm -hmm. um, and we just sat there and committed to getting it done. I just remember like my son was running in and out. I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to let nothing <laughs> distract me from getting this done because I just felt that moment, and we just created that song on the spot. Oh, hell yeah. So that's how that came about, man. And uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite records I've ever done. And it's what cra it's crazy because now I work with Xavi and Marquise a lot. We did an album together this yeah. last year, and we're going to put it out this summer. So oh, that rad. song is really like important because that's the start of this new MBG 3.0, I like to call it, because there's been different versions of it over the years. But we're kind of like X-Men, you know what I'm saying? People Damn. leave, yeah, yeah. go. They even come back. Professor that, like, X, though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, you know what I mean? So that's kind of how... Uh, that I, I looking back at that song is what's uh, yeah, it's kind of the, this the mode right now. Yeah. yeah, and and I have this weird way of kind of like prophesizing stuff in my art. Like it's oh. weird how things kind of come to light. Hell yeah, I don't know. That's well, like, damn, that's, wow, that's a really, that's a really cool backstory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I picked that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Thank thanks you. for thanks for making it a dope track. Gotta give yeah, you, gotta give you some to work with. So Hell yeah, Thank Hell you. yeah. <laughs> um, I do have to say though, there's one other one I want to honorably mention. Uh, here we go. Uh, and it's already won. Yeah. Off the album, uh, Why Are You Like This? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, again, the keys, there's just something about it that pulled me in, but it just, it hit differently the way that you layered the vocals. Yeah. Like, I, like again, the, On the, hook. the engineer brain yeah. me. Like, exactly. It just, it, there was something different about how it was presented. And it kind of had that element through the whole album. Yeah. But there was something about that being the first track. Yeah. Just immediately grabbed me. Right. And so like, even though I had made most of my notes by the time I got to that album, I had to go through that whole album yeah. just based off of that song. Hey man. And you know, I gotta, I gotta say that album was the album that started this run too, because, um, the COVID, that COVID era. Yep. And, uh, we was just, we was just trapped in the house and, um, uh, you know, we did, we did the album, um, and yeah, that record is produced by Love Jones. So shout out Love oh, yeah, Jones. Yeah, shout out Love Jones. Yeah, that's my guy. So like he had a couple on there. He did that one and uh Trey Frank. Uh so yeah, when I heard that beat, man, I just I remember like the way I layer my hooks, I, I really mm -hmm. I kinda listen I listen to like a lot of Kid Cudi and stuff. Mm -hmm. and I noticed he does this thing where 
He's not singing really on key. Yeah. But like he'll have a high, he'll have a mid, low, and like I just kind of mix it up. You know, it just depends on how many layers I want. You know, I might have done like nine stacks. Yeah. On that, but it just makes it more mm -hmm. big. And I really like, you know, enjoy creating like stadium yeah. types anthems. You know, that's the type of songs. I, my my genre of music, I, I call it impact music. So like, I okay, want to make an impact when yeah. you hear it. You know, and that's how I wanted to. I wanted to impact your life in a certain way. So yeah, that that type of record definitely falls in line with the the type of stuff I like to make. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you saying that. That's another good one. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, for sure. I am curious to know now, what is you one of, I mean, you have so many, I'm sure you have more than one, but <laughs> what is one of your favorite tracks to perform? Favorite tracks to perform? Um, I would say, you know, I'll, I'll take it back to my first project, uh, Calhoun Ave, mm -hmm. uh, since it's such a, it's where I'm from. You know, I swear that's where the, my grandma's house was. That's where all my musical journey started. So I like to go back there and feel how I was feeling at that time when I created that record. Mm -hmm. uh, it's produced by Ed Cruz. Shout out to Ed Cruz he in New Mexico. Um, and I just found him on Sound Click. I want to okay. say, okay. Um, date myself, but I think I found him like SoundClick or SoundCloud. It might have been SoundCloud. Just randomly found him, and he made he makes nothing but like DJ Premier Boom Bap shit. Yeah. So like when I heard the dun dun dun, like the sample, I was just like, oh, this is classic. This is mm -hmm. like what um what I could always go back to in my catalog. Like okay, if you want to start. Uh, that Matt Randall journey as far as like going back through my my projects like start with that song you know because you can hear the the hunger you can hear the raw unfined mm. you know what I'm saying unrefined version of me uh, so I would say that was that's definitely one of the staple ones I still like to perform even though it's 2024 hell yeah no, I love that now for this next one, we're going to look at music that hasn't come out yet. And you've already yeah. kind of touched on it a little. Yeah, yeah. But for, I'm excited for that. For what you're working on, what hasn't come out yet, what you got going going yeah. soon, how would you describe it? Like, 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 think like descriptive words, narrative words. What are some of the differences in sound? What are some of the things you're going to be bringing to the table with your new music? Oh, uh, man, it's, it's epic um, because Ooh, like... Um, because there's so many different things. I have different vaults with mm -hmm. each member of MBG currently. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and MBG right now is a solidify Selah, Jordan Fletcher, G Lo, Marquise, Nine Three, Xavi, uh whoever I'm forgetting. I was gonna say so many, so but many it's names. Not like we got a yeah. whole we got a whole stable of artists. Um and I have like music with all of them mm -hmm. individually and then we came together and created the album. It's called God Turn Me Up. That's a exclusive for you. Oh for your show okay. it's the album's oh, yeah. called God Turn Me Up. Oh yeah. And it's coming this summer. Uh we haven't uh, like locked down a date as of yet um, but the first single current events me and Marquise produced by Trox shout out to Trox mm -hmm. super dope um, that's coming soon we got a video for that so we're gonna drop the first single soon and we're gonna start rolling out that project um, yeah. it's amazing man and and you know I'm working on like my next album I'm gonna take my time with that it's, I think it's gonna be me and Solomon okay. uh, just like just us two locking in and, and that's gonna be you know that's gonna be huge Damn. Well, definitely looking forward to all yeah, of that's, that. Yeah, that's going to be my uh, third album. Yeah. Hell yeah. Because I've done EPs and projects. And yeah, yeah, One of those, like, nah, there's a difference. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> you know? So. Definitely. Um, and then I want to take a moment and zoom all the way out. Like, we've dived all the way into music that you haven't even put out yet. Mm -hmm. But I want to take a big step back and look at music as a whole. Okay. What are some of the things about newer music that's happening right now, or at least newer music to you that you're experiencing that you enjoy? What are some of the attributes and characteristics of more current sounds that are like things that you're like enjoying and appreciate? So current current sounds that I'm creating? Yeah, I mean, I, more, more... Or just in, in like... in general. Say, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah music I mean, in general. I think, I mean, when you said earlier how I kind of told a line of... I love the golden era, right? I love 90s mm -hmm. hip hop. Like, you know, that's, you know, in my mind, I feel like that's the era I'm from, right? Yeah. But I love to be able to bring that to right now, you know? So I love like what Griselda does right now mm -hmm. for, for sure because it's like, it sounds like that era, but it's new. So like you yeah. have different sounds, things. It's maybe it's a little brighter. I like how things are mixed a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, even though I think we got to start like, 
bringing back i think vocals are so loud over yeah over beats now so i think it'd be cool to kind of like bring that aspect back a little bit like making them together you know yeah, giving mean? moments for the music to breathe in between yeah. the, the the vocals themselves but i love the pockets i love like you know just the creativity and the samples i'm, I'm you know i'm a sample mm -hmm. i love dilla i love pete rock i love premiere so like all these guys like if you find a way to creatively f flip something like you know i'm i'm for it you oh, yeah. know so like uh my boy solomon actually i got this song where he uh he flipped a cover of someone singing Beyonce or uh, Justin Timberlake to the end of time. Mm -hmm. and, but it's like a TikTok. And it's just like crazy how he flipped that, you yeah. know? And it's like, but it sounds like a current, like, you know, how these TikTokers, they're doing like that sturdy, mm -hmm. like, so it sounds like a sturdy type track. Okay. And so I got like, I got stuff like that. So I got like different bags. So, you Damn. know, I'm like, uh, I'm all over the place. I'm trying all different things. So I think staying relevant and, you know, I've, like I said, I have a young kid. So like he could kind of like tell me like what's what he's listening to. Yeah. I watch him like watching YouTube. So I'm like, man, let me try some stuff like that. And he was, he was like doing a dance to us. So I was like, all right, cool. So I think, <laughs> you know, we got something with that one and we're going to do a video for that too. That's coming soon. Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah, no, I did yeah, that. Yeah. I um, mean, then I guess let's take a moment now and let's focus on you as the producer, because okay. you know, you, you know, yeah, obviously you make Essentially. music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what are some of the things you do, or like, how do you take the approach of like? Because it sounds like you don't make your own beats for your own music pretty often. Nah. So do you make stuff for other people? Do you just make stuff for the fun of making stuff? How does how does that exist? So I wouldn't even say I'm like a producer. A lot of people do like to call me a producer. I guess I, from the turn the aspect of like seeing like the picture and maybe have an idea. Okay. I would say. Like, like a production wise, but I'm not actually pressing. Oh, buttons. gotcha. Are you more like engineer? Than? Engineer. Okay. That's okay. I, gotcha. I like to look at myself as an audio engineer. So, like, okay. yeah, you know, I record vocals mainly. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, like, just my whole thing is like, I, I want it to sound like a conversation. I like to try and mix vocals to where it sounds like we're having a conversation right now. Okay. You know, like, that's kind of how I look at it in my mind. I'm like, how does this sound? It's clear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cut through. I love, obviously, I love like reverb and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's kind of how I approach it, man. You know, it's it's pretty cut and dry for me. No, I dig that. Um, so. And you said you do all of it in your kitchen. Do you have like a, like, yeah. do you have like a booth in there? Do you just do it with the padding? Room? I got okay. padding and stuff. And then obviously, I got, I got an eyeball and. Yeah. Uh, that's, that, that was going to be my so, next question. Shout yeah, out Chaotica. Yeah. Shout out Chaotica. You know, oh, yeah. I had it from it. I remember I seen DJ Battle Cat have one of those. And it's, my boy it's a cool six, idea. Actually, shout out to Six wherever you are the OG he's the one that put me on to the whole eyeball thing and then when I got one everybody started getting one I ain't saying I ain't, saying, <laughs> I ain't started but I mean like in the city I don't know I, I feel like I was one of the first people to have an eyeball yeah and to have a uh, I started I got the Apollo early too the okay. UAD yeah uh, Apollo twin duo so like that's a part of studios now too so yeah you know so well, hey, I mean you know uh, we're all fans of Universal Audio here um, what uh, what mic do you use uh, so yeah, I just I shout out my my guy Isaiah Sims. He put me on to Warm Audio. Ooh, okay. So I have a warm Audio W eighty seven, I think yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, they're U eighty seven. U eighty, yeah, exactly. So I just, yeah, I love that man. Uh, it's been sounding really good. Um, I've had it since September. I almost oh, yeah. went, I almost went with um a Neumann, but I felt like you know I. I did this breakdown with somebody else the other day for the amount of uh, amount of money you can spend on an actual U87. Right. You can get a TLM 49. Yep. And an SM7B. Mm -hmm. And oh, there was one other SM7B mic. SM7B class. And, and uh, like a, a, a blue blueberry. Right. For literally the same price. And those three mics are the only three mics I would ever have in a vocal recording mic locker. Wow. And I mean, it, yes, like the U87 does have a million things you can do with it. But if you're not doing a million things, yeah. what's the point of a nearly exactly. $4,000 microphone? Right, right. So I, yeah. I'm, I'm a firm believer that, you know, it, it is a great mic if you are working with like 10,000 people in situations a day. Right. But if you've got a, a thing that you're good at, yeah. find three things for that price that work for different voices in that range. Exactly. And you're going to have a good time. And that's what I'm, I'm excited for this because um, when he put me onto that, because you know the whole clone mm -hmm. aspect of things. And um, well, Warm's a good company. It is. Like, it's great. I would love to get, I, I'm a big fan of the LA 2A. Okay. But like, I can't afford six LA 2As. Yeah. But I could definitely afford six of the Warm 
you know, LA two A equivalent. Exactly. And so that, yeah. that makes perfect sense. To That's me. why I'm excited to put out this new music too, because of like it's on the new mics. So oh, like, okay. Excited to like see what people think of that. You know, even though people don't really listen for the quality, but like you, for instance, yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm I mean, gonna send you the album. I want to hear what hear what you think. Oh yeah, yeah I'm definitely looking sure. forward to that. <laughs> also, <laughs> sure. I think if even though people aren't looking for quality change, like they notice right. change. Like when your voice suddenly is more yeah. presented or exactly. it's, even if it's not more or less something, but it's just different. I love my shit cutting through. Like, you know, yeah. like what I said, Nas is my favorite rapper. His voice just cuts through mm -hmm. everything. And like, I get compared to him a lot, which is insane. You know, like I'll never, I don't know why people say that, but uh, like, that's kind of how I mix my shit. Like I like to really cut through. Hell yeah. You know, so. Uh, well, thanks for going down that road for a little sure. bit. For all y'all that are not engineer people, uh, that's, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that was a little bad, uh, but that's, you know, that's, that's, yeah, the that's stuff I like to nerd out on. That's, that's the, that's the fun it. stuff. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, now, I've got one last question to go before we move into the next portion. Yes, sir. And this is probably the densest question in the interview. Okay. But we've talked a lot about, you know, your experience with music, the actions, the reaction, things like that. But when it's just you and the music one on one, what does music give back to you? Wow, that's a great question. Oh, man, I mean, music, some of the, the, you know, music has gotten me through so much, man. Like, I've gone through a lot of traumatic situations in my, through my, throughout my childhood and, like, just still, you know, life is going to life. Um, and I, there are certain records that I could just reference. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, for one, uh, Blue off of Below the Heavens, uh, he had this song called Dancing in the Rain. It's the second verse on there. He's essentially rapping about the struggle of uh, artists trying to get on. And I, you know, like, I feel like any artist, even though we we don't like to talk about the tr the troubles, they always kind of be like, oh, yeah, I just, one day I just woke up and now, now I'm on, you know? Yeah. Like, they leave out the journey. So, mm -hmm. like, he actually, he put it so perfectly, like, something that you could just easily digest. If you listen to that record, you listen to that second verse, man. It's just, like, tells you the life of a starving artist trying to get on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, I love those type of records that put you in that place. You know, you can visualize it. You can see the color of it. You know, that's why I love Nas. I love, like, how he paints pictures, you know? So, I love... I love being able to immerse myself in sounds, so even if it's just a beat, you know, if it, a perfectly dope beat, you know, you could just get lost in it. Yeah. You know, like, like Erica Badu, Bag Lady, you know, and, mm -hmm. and end up, then end up, Dre in, end up flipping it, you know, having Nate Dogg on there, like, amazing, man. Like, you know, you just get lost in the art, in, in the sounds of it. So that's what it gives back to me. I, I get this, like, full euphoric feeling when I listen to music. Damn. Yeah, that's really powerful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Sure. All right, but that being said, we're going to go ahead and move on to some hypothetical questions. Ooh. And for these, sky's the limits. The questions are all made up, so the answers are allowed to be as well. Okay. This first one's pretty straightforward. Right. If you could work with any one person, the only requirement is they have to be alive. Okay. Who would you want to work with, and how would you want to work with them? Ooh. I would say... I'm gonna say Nas, man, uh, because his his business acumen. I think like what he's doing in in like the business world, mm -hmm. make a lot of smart decisions. We don't even have to do music. Um, you know, I would just love to peep game on how he's like investing. Yeah. So yeah, just how he's living life at the moment and what he's choosing to do still, with what he's got. Still thriving. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's it's a model to to pay attention to. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And then subsequently, and I, I know you've worked with a bunch of them already, but who's a local artist that you're aware of that you haven't gotten to connect with yet, but you would like to? Hmm. Local artists I haven't connected with. Uh, Teaspoon. Okay. Yeah, Teaspoon. Uh, you know, it's funny. I haven't even met him in person, but we all got, we got like the best, same uh, group of friends. Yeah. And, you know, he's dope. He's He's been doing this for a long time, just like me. And, uh, you know, all his joints are dope. So shout out to Spoon. Oh, yeah. For sure. And everybody, you know what to do. Add him in the comments. Let's make that happen. Yeah, let's get it. And then for this next one, like I said before, sky's the limits, and it's pretty literal in this sense. But if you could perform anywhere in the world, and you wouldn't have to worry about crowd access or building stability or power, mm. guaranteed the best lineup, guaranteed the best show, and it doesn't have to be a venue. It can be anywhere. Mm. Where would you want to perform? Man. Whatever. Yo, I would love to like bring Woodstock back. 
Okay. And then just like perform. I want to perform at like the biggest crowd. I remember DMX performed mm -hmm. at Woodstock and like he had everyone in that moment. Yeah. Like just going <laughs> crazy. And it's hard to like follow up DMX's energy, but that crowd. Yeah. Yeah. So like somewhere with like a crazy crowd. Okay. You know, so like, yeah, yeah like that, that Woodstock festival he was at, mm -hmm. that would have been a dream to perform at for sure. Hell yeah. Yeah. No, I dig that. Yeah. Um, And then to wrap up the hypothetical questions, if you could get one more album from anybody, they could be alive, they could be dead, they could have not put out an album in a hundred years, they could have put out an album yesterday. Mm. Who would you want an album from? Man, God rest Nipsey Hussle, because we, man... Ah, uh, it's a crime, man. It's a crime. Because uh, his albums and his projects before mm -hmm. Three Lap were amazing. And I know, and I, you know, I had the chance to hear what he was working on next, uh, a little bit of what he was working on next. And man, yeah, Nip. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Nip would have been that. Just him being able to continue on was, was going to change the world. Yeah. For sure. Now, I appreciate that he is regularly becoming it, it for the longest time the answer was always somewhere along the lines of eminem for like every musical question mm. but slowly he has been showing up more and more as the recurring answer and i really mm. appreciate that the man he he just he just moved differently you know what i mean he spoke on things right. in ways that i think that you know a lot of people didn't really bring to the front right and so i i fully agree with you sure but with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping this up i know you've already touched on it but what can we look forward to between now and november now November, yeah. So we're gonna uh we're gonna definitely put out that MBG album, God mm -hmm. Turn Me Up this summer. Uh, first single, current events, me and Marquise coming out soon, produced by Trox. Got the video to go with that. And shoot, just probably popping up on features, doing shows. Um I, I do my event in the summer. Mm -hmm. It's a back to school drive called the Kids Outside Festival. Oh yeah. Uh, so us in George Park. We we raised four million dollars to remake the oh, damn. the park there. So, you know, I'm really proud of that's that's, you know, inspired by Nipsey, like mm -hmm. what can you give back to your community? So that's really like a passion project of mine that's, you know, actually been the best thing I've been a part of yeah and music it started off just me being a music artist and like finding out ways to you know be on my platform mm -hmm. you know share my platform for the for good so yeah create know, a positive the, image the kids outside yeah. you know uh we're looking forward to kids outside festival saturday august 24th 6 30 p.m that's a set it's gonna be the weekend it's gonna be a great time uh bring your kids it's family fun and you know it's gonna be a great time and yeah i'm just gonna be just performing and and creating always stay in the studio and mm -hmm. always trying to work with artists so if y'all need studio time tap in with me oh, yeah. all the socials and all that and um uh, yeah i'm just gonna keep going oh yeah as long as I can. No, I love that. Yeah. And then for the next one, actually go ahead and look straight at the camera. Tell everybody how they can find you. Yeah. Um, you know, Google me, man. M-A-T-R-A-N-D-O-L. That's Matt Randall. Uh, you know, I got IG, Twitter, or X, whatever y'all call it. Uh, Spotify, Apple, everything. Uh, it's Matt Randall, some version of Matt Randall. You know what I'm saying? Lo love to hear from y'all, for sure. Oh, Thanks yeah. for the opportunity to be here. Yeah, yeah definitely. And uh, we've actually, we've got one more question to go. Oh, I'm sorry. Any other plugs, any other shout outs, anybody else you want to put on while you're on here? Yeah, I mean, shout out, shout out the whole MBG, man. We we about to be dropping, uh, you know, like it's incredible, man. You know, we got projects from Jordan, Sela, Xavi, Marquise, 9 is working. Uh, we're going, we're going crazy. So shout out to the, the whole team, shout out the whole city. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody keep doing their thing, finding their voice, finding their way. Hell yeah. Sure. Right. Now that being said, We've got one last question to go. Yeah. But before we do, I'm going to steal the camera for just a second. Okay. As always, y'all, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. And one more shout out to the Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. Guarantee you're going to like it. Make sure to use code Jambox for 20% off and a free gift. And with that being said, the final question. And this is entirely up to your interpretation. But what is an album you feel is more on the obscure side? So it's a deep cut. It's one that not a lot of people know, but it's one you think everybody should know. Mm. And I mean, you've been listening, you've been dropping some quality names from back in the day already. So <laughs> I'm sure you've got something up there. You know what's yeah. crazy? 
even though this guy's a podcaster now and like you would never really look at him as a serious artist. Was oh, it Joe Rogan? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's Joe Budden though. <laughs> okay. So okay. Joe Budden. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Joe, man. Now nah, he's he, like Joe Budden was like one of the artists that I tapped into that really got me to open up and like be vulnerable in my art. So I would mm-hmm. say that whole mood music series, um, mood music, mood music two for me okay. was incredible, man. Uh, like just, just how open and honest, how he could just dive in like that, you know, yeah. it's just like, wow. You know, so I'd say that's one. Damn, that's no, a name I haven't heard in a minute. No one's going to really tap into him as an artist. Yeah. Because of what he's done in the podcast world. But like that project for people that really enjoy that storytelling of hip hop and like, you know what I'm saying? He's, he, yeah. It was nice. No, hell yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you for that. And thank you so much for joining us today. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And this has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. I'm Jimmy. I'm Matt Randall. And we're signing off. Later, y'all. That's a wrap. This is not a live This is a show. Keep jamming.